Hey there, Bulldog fans, and welcome into the Bulldog Blitz. I'm your host, Mark Minner. Coming up on today's show, the Butler men's basketball team season has finally ended, but only after making a run back to the NCAA championship. The softball team is gearing up for a huge homestand, and we will hear what Coach Brad Stevens had to say at the pep rally this week. But up first, it's not often that a school the size of Butler makes it past the first weekend in the NCAA tournament. It's even less common to make it to the Final Four and almost unheard of to make it to the national championship. However, Butler managed to do that and do so in back-to-back -back seasons. Bulldogs advanced to Houston after making quite a run in the NCAA tournament. Let's take a look at the run that the Bulldogs were on. They started first in that Horizon League tournament with a victory over Milwaukee. That game was 59-44. The Bulldogs proved that they were ready for this tournament run. Then on March 8th, it was the second round of the NCAA tournament that was played out in Washington, D.C., where the Bulldogs took care of Old Dominion. It was an 8-9 matchup. The Bulldogs getting that 8 seed going up against the Monarchs and a two-point victory on a last-second bucket by Matt Howard. Then on Saturday of that opening round of Butler's play in the NCAA tournament, they took on Pitt in a game that would go down for the ages. Butler, back in that Verizon Center, got the one-point victory. I don't even know how to explain everything that happened in those last two seconds, but a bunch of fouls, one by Mack and then one by Pittsburgh. Howard goes to the line, hits a key couple of free throws. Bulldogs take the 71-70 victory in that NCAA third round. Then they advance to the Sweet 16 in back-to-back -back seasons. That was going to be played down in New Orleans at the NCAA Championship Regional. Butler, Butler taking the 61-54 victory over Wisconsin. A lot of people liked Wisconsin in that matchup, a very similar style of play to Butler, but they were able to shoot down, shoot down their two leading scorers, did the Bulldogs. 61-54, Butler taking the victory. Then on Saturday of that weekend in the Elite Eight, it was Butler going up against Florida. Florida, a team that has historically given the Bulldogs a lot of problems. Last two times they've played, Florida has taken the victory, including a heartbreak back in 2000. Butler, however, upends the tradition, 74-71. The Bulldogs take care of the Gators. So then it was on to the Final Four in Houston, Texas at Reliance Stadium. And the Bulldogs took care of VCU. The Rams ranked 11th in the NCAA tournament, fall by 8. And what was the first game really for Butler that they could breathe a sigh of relief with a few seconds left to play? And then it went to the national championship. And the national championship game was a tough one that went for the Bulldogs. Butler went up against a red-hot UConn team led by one of the best scorers in the nation in Kemba Walker. Coach Jim Calhoun for Connecticut was going for his third national championship and ironically was just over double the age of Coach Stevens. Calhoun, 68 years old, Stevens, 34 years old. Butler shot an NCAA championship record low 19% from the field, struggled to find points in the paint. The Dogs collected just two points in the interior as opposed to the 26 for UConn. But it wasn't all negative. Butler was able to limit UConn to just 35% shooting themselves and actually had the advantage at halftime 22-19. But in the second, the Bulldogs were unable to answer back and the Huskies captured the title 53-41. Tomorrow afternoon, the women's tennis team will host Youngstown State in a league match at 2 p.m. The women are a perfect 3-0 at the start of Horizon League play. They shut out Detroit and Green Bay 7-0 on the road to start off conference play. Then they beat Milwaukee 6-1 on the road this past weekend, but now the team will start up five straight matches at home to close out league play before the championship starts in the Horizon League on April 22nd. Time now for some news and notes around the Butler Athletic Department. Well, the awards keep coming in for Chris Gawson and Kirsty Legg of the Butler track and field team. Gawson is in his senior season and Legg in her sophomore season. Both of these runners notched a first place victory in the 2011 Mike Poline Invitational. The Invitational took place up at Purdue this past weekend and Gawson took the top place in the men's 800, running it in over 153.07, beating fellow Butler runner Ross Clark, who finished at 153. 79. Kirsty Legg took first place in the women's 800, finishing in 215.03. On the men's side, Craig Jordan picked up a second place finish in the men's 3000. And on the women's side, Shelby Burnett and Maribeth Scheel picked up second place finishes. To start off the official volleyball season, we're still mo four months away, but the spring schedule has been announced and will feature four contests for the volleyball team. This first is a tournament at Hinkle Fieldhouse tomorrow inside that historic building against IUPUI and Akron. The Bulldogs will get underway at 8.30 when they take on the Jaguars of IUPUI. Then they face the Akron Zips at 11 a.m. Butler will also play UIndy on April 15th and host Ball State at 6 p.m. on April 21st. Butler's team this year will also feature DePaul transfer Chelsea Kirkpatrick, 
who graduated from nearby Center Grove High School. Also, one last note, the Butler baseball team fell to Purdue in a close game on Wednesday 10-8. Purdue jumped out of the gate strong to open it up to a 6-0 start in the first couple of innings. However, Butler pulled it back to within two before eventually falling short. Luke Duncan was 3-5 for five at the plate and scored three runs for the Bulldogs. Coming up, we've got your Blitz Breakdown segment. Alyssa Garfinkel will join me right back here in studio. Stay with us right here on the Bulldog Blitz. Hey there, welcome back into the Bulldog Blitz. Joined now by Alyssa Garfinkel of the Butler Collegian, the multimedia editor. It's our Blitz Breakdown segment. It's been about a month since we've done this, Alyssa, but we are back and ready to go, all recharged off of the national championship <laughs> game. Alyssa, thanks for joining us. Thank you. All right, let's talk about this men's basketball team, but boy, they have captivated the nation. You talk about an amazing run from where they were on February 3rd. And then let's flash now to the championship game. We're down there in Houston, uh, coming off a big win against VCU. Everybody thinks that maybe Butler is actually the favorite against UConn. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of discrepancy about who's going to win that game. It turns out to be quite a defensive game, and, and Butler falls. But what do you think that the main reason Butler struggled so much from that field? They had just 19% shooting. Well, you know, they did exactly what they should have done on defense. They contained Kimba Walker. But offensively, they just, you know, shots weren't falling. And when shots can't, you know, like that's a confidence booster right there. When shots, you're making big shots and stuff. And I thought after the second half coming out, Chase got hit that three. I thought it was going to be fine. Shots were going to fall, but they couldn't even make layups. So that right there was just, you know, the easy stuff, the going up strong. And you saw Andrew Smith and Matt Howard just kind of taking a beating down in the post because they have big guys. And that's where they struggle mostly. You work at the end of the post. And, you know, when you can't even make a layup, that's, that's where they're going to struggle. And it, you, you talk about uh, a, a lot of different things the Bulldogs did well. They played great defense, holding mm -hmm. UConn to just 35%. If you talk about the NCAA a tournament run that the Bulldogs had, coming off that Horizon League championship win against Milwaukee, quite an impressive little run, five wins. Uh, of all the games out there, which was your favorite to watch? I have to say Pittsburgh. Okay. I thought it was a great, you know, a great game. I I stopped. I was watching it. I was, you know, I was so nervous, and it was so exciting. But they played well, and you know, Shelvin had his little spill, and then you know, Matt <laughs> came back and you know, won the game for them. So it was incredible. It was, it was showed the true heart of every single guy in that team. And who's your MVP for the tournament for Butler? Um, I'm gonna have to go with Matt Howard, despite his how he played, you know, in the championship. I think Matt deserves every single bit of credit he always gets. And he got quite a bit of publicity. Everybody mm -hmm. knew that he's from Connersville, but there's not really a more deserving player out there than Matt. He, he works his tail off. He does. And, you know, he's the guy that I can, you know, I remember a story that Ronald always told me that, you know, they have 20 suicides. They have, you know, all the time in the world to do them. And Matt sprints out every single one of them. He's the first to, he's the first to finish. He's the first, in, you know, in the gym and the last to leave. So that right there shows every bit of heart and desire that he has. Well, now you move on and you look to the future for both this team and for some of the seniors. There's five seniors out there, and mm -hmm. three of them have the potential, I believe, to keep playing. And you talk about Matt Howard, or sorry, two of them, Matt Howard and Sean Van Zandt, to keep playing, and then Shelvin Mack, the junior. Question is, does he go to the NBA? So let's start with Mack first, though. Million dollar question Does Mack return in a Butler uniform? I, I want to say yes. <laughs> I think he's going to stay. I think, you know, with the potential lockout um, of the NBA right now, he doesn't know whether he's going to get signed before it ever happens. So if he does, then, you know, great, he gets his money whether or not. But if it doesn't, then he can't return back to school. He doesn't get his money. So he's, he's kind of at a loss. I think it'd be great for him to stay, work on his skills, develop more as a player, and, you know, be an a even better NBA prospect next year. And now let's move to, to Matt Howard. And, and this is a guy that has worked really hard throughout mm -hmm. his career and has started to got, get some more NBA chatters this season has progressed. What do you think happens to him? Um, I think – I definitely think that he could definitely play in the NBA. I think he'd be a great player no matter where he goes. Um, I know he's talked about going overseas, but I think if he does go, he'll go in the lower rounds for the draft. Um, but I think he could help out any team, whether he, you know, he's been working on his three-point range, and we've seen him develop well on that. So I think that's definitely something he can add to his aura. I know we're out of time on this question, but real quick, Sean Van Zant, does he 
continue playing in Europe? I think he, I think he definitely has the opportunity to. I think he's a great player. He's been working on his mid-range game, and that's definitely something that's going to help him in the future. Okay, now we, we switch from basketball season, and now as the, as the season is over, we move towards those spring sports. And, mm -hmm. and one team that's kind of going underrated under the radar right now it has really grown in their first season under Scott Hall is this Butler softball team. We talked to him at the beginning of, of this season on the Blitz, and, and he's got a lot of momentum for this team. They're 11 and 18, looking strong. But mm -hmm. is this a team that's going to be winning that Horizon League championship? I think they definitely can do it. They're 4 and 1 in conference right now. They play Cleveland State this weekend um, on Saturday and Sunday, and I think it's going to be a challenge for them because Cleveland State's always been very, very good. But um, I think they can definitely do it. They have. You know, every single player, and you know, they know what it takes to win. They've been there. They know exactly what they do. They have a lot of experience, even under, you know, a new coach. So I think that they definitely have all the potential in the world to be, you know, at the top of the Horizon League and win. Well, I mean, you hit on it right there. They've got the new coach, Scott Hall. You have a lot of the same players mm -hmm. with this new coach, but, but how much you've been on teams, how much is that new coach making the difference, or how much is it just more experience? Um, I think, you know, experience is a lot for them right now. Um, under a new coach, you know, he's – He's still learning. They're learning to adjust to him. So I think it helps that they have that experience. He's coming into a whole new conference. He's having to learn all of it, whole new players. So for them to know that already is, you know, a big, it's very helpful, helpful for them right now. All right, and finally, the last category, the toss-up. We don't have Steve or Lance here to, no. to help answer your questions. But what do you have for us today? What's on your um, mind? I want tennis. You know, we, it, I think it doesn't get talked about enough, but we have two great, you know, men's and women's team, and I think I want to see how far they can go. You know, they are they work so hard. You know, they're always in the bubble every single night. You know, still working very hard. So I want to see, you know, how they can develop. They've been, you know, kind of struggling lately. I want to see if they can turn that around and, you know, just come out and surprise us all. Yeah, that men's tennis team struggled a little bit. The women's tennis team, though, on that, that five-game mm -hmm. winning streak for, for the, the last five matches, including an undefeated uh, mark in, in conference play. And I know Coach Susha for both the men's and the women's programs is, is certainly busy. Mm -hmm. uh, with, with the success so far in the right. season, but it'll be interesting. You're right. So thank you so much for joining us, as always. Thank you. All right, that's Alyssa Garfinkel, multimedia editor of the Butler Collegian. Helped out a bunch while we were on our tournament run as well. So Alyssa, we thank you for that, too. Thank you. That'll do it for this Blitz Breakdown. We'll be back, including a preview of what's to come this week on campus, as well as a listen inside what happened at the pep rally with Coach Stevens. On Tuesday afternoon after the national championship game, the Bulldogs had a little bit of trouble getting back to Indianapolis. At about 9 a.m., the team learned their plane had some mechanical issues and wouldn't be able to take off until 5 p.m. Eastern time. Unfortunate news for the Bulldogs, but unfortunate news for the Butler fans as well, who were planning to be at the pep rally at 4 p.m. on that Tuesday. Plans were changed and the pep rally held one day later. Mayor Greg Ballard, Commissioner John LaCrone of the Horizon League, University President Bobby Fong, Athletic Director Barry Collier all talked at the event before handing it over to head coach Brad Stevens. Here's what Coach Stevens had to say about his team. Uh, you know, I don't know where to start, um, but I certainly, certainly feel, and we all feel, uh, incredibly honored that people would show up and celebrate this. It has been a, a run, uh, certainly it has taken us all on a great ride. You know, people are going to talk about we didn't shoot the way we wanted to in the national championship game, whatever, that, that happens. But my only regret of this season is that my eyes gave out and made on senior day. Because there is, there is no other day of the year that I would have rather been here than that. And so this is my second chance at senior day, so bear with me for a minute. Recruiting Matthew was um, recruiting this kid from Connorsville, and we all you know, we spent a couple of times. We spent a couple. We spent the one morning where we got up at 4:30 and Todd and I drove over there, and, and Matt shot by himself in a morning workout. And we almost all fell asleep in the whole morning workout. He kept making shot after shot. But this is the story I wanted to share. With you, Zach and this a little bit. And Matt's in there. So Matt was nearing his decision on where he was going to go to school. We knew that Butler may have had a great chance of landing and my wife and I knew this all the time. But he was going to call and ask a couple of questions. 
Well, like any prepared person, Zach gave me the questions before he called. <laughs> presentation, Indiana Governor Mitch Daniels sent in a video to the rally even though he couldn't be there in person. Governor Daniels is a big Butler basketball fan and shared his thoughts on the tournament run. I guess he's just determined to finally over because I'm not away to say how much I admire and appreciate the Butler basketball team and everything they've done for the school and for all the rest of us. Not just this year, but now for a long time. You know, again, y'all surprised all the experts all the know-it-alls. Uh, I saw on Sports Center last night that Big Vital and Charles Park, they're already picking against Mumbo the season over and actually they don't even have to How important y'all have been in the middle. I just want to say on behalf of the citizens of Indiana, uh, how much you have been all of us and how proud we are to be associated even remotely with you. You know, there was all this run, and now for so many years, there was never one time when as a governor or just a citizen, I ever said about a Buckley player, oh, I wish he hadn't done that, I wish he hadn't said that. Every step of the way, uh, from your coach on down, you conducted yourselves in total class, you represented what we think of as in the end. We'll take a look at the week ahead in Butler Sports. Stay tuned right here to the Bulldog Blitz. As things start to settle down for the madness of March, the spring sports start to take center stage. The 18 and 11 Butler softball team will open up their biggest homestand of the season starting on Saturday. Cleveland State comes to town to start a nine-game stretch with a doubleheader starting at 1 p.m. on Saturday. Then Sunday is the finale of the series with the Vikings at the Butler softball field that get underway at noon. Baseball will be on the road this weekend for a three-game series at Youngstown State. That series gets underway at 3 p.m. on Friday afternoon. Both men's and women's tennis teams will host Youngstown State this weekend. The men get underway first at 10 a.m. on Saturday before the women host their match at 2 p.m. Both teams will play again on Sunday with the same times, but this time the opponent will be switched to Cleveland State. That will just about do it for this week's episode of the Bulldog Blitz. Make sure to catch us on Hoosier TV or online at youtube.com backslash Bulldog Blitz Sports. Until then, I'm Mark Minner. We'll see you right back here on the Bulldog Blitz.